So today I'd like to talk to you about the three types of mechanical energy. In our last lesson, we learned that energy was the ability of one object to bring about changes to itself or other objects. We learned that work was the quantity of energy that was added to or removed from an object, and we can add and remove energy by applying a force. Finally, we learned that power was the amount of energy added per second. Okay, so when we look at our types of mechanical energy, the first type is called kinetic energy. You might have learned kinetic energy when you were in middle school as being the energy of a moving object, and that's a great definition. Kinetic energy, again, is the energy of a moving object. Moving objects can bring about changes to themselves or other objects. So here I am with some kinetic energy as I move across the classroom on my skateboard. You can see that I am no longer fluent with my skateboard like I was when I was younger, but yet you get the idea, moving objects have energy. If I were to hit something, and it really shouldn't be if, it should be when I hit something, I will bring about changes to myself or other objects. I possess energy because I am in motion. Okay, how much energy? Well, it turns out that it depends upon my mass. My mass is now much larger than it was when I was a kid. So I would possess more kinetic energy now than I did when I was younger. However, I seem to be much slower than I was when I was younger. The second factor that determines kinetic energy is my speed. Okay, so these two factors come together to determine kinetic energy. How massive is the object? How fast is the object? Where does kinetic energy come from? It comes from work. All energy comes from work. So if we have an astronaut out in space who's not moving, he has no kinetic energy. But if he has a fire extinguisher like Wally did, and that fire extinguisher provides a force or a thrust, that force will give him kinetic energy. It's giving him all kinetic energy because there's no friction taking energy away, and he's not moving up or down a hill. So all of that energy is turning into kinetic energy. All right, so what we would do is we would take that work, and all of this work, would turn into kinetic energy. I want to make sure you remember energy is measured in joules, and I want to make sure you know that energy is not a vector. So it doesn't matter which direction he's heading, it just depends on how fast he's moving. All right, so we take our person, we apply a force for a certain amount of distance, that creates work, that work creates kinetic energy, and here is how you calculate your kinetic energy in the end. The kinetic energy I possess at the end of that work is a product of my mass and my velocity squared, multiplied by one half. Make sure the mass is in kilograms and the velocity is in meters per second. That will make the energy come out in joules just like it is supposed to. All right, so kinetic energy, energy of a moving object, depends on the mass and depends upon the speed. It is not a vector. I'd like you to calculate some typical kinetic energies. The same objects we used when we did momentum. So you got a baseball, Usain Bolt, a NASCAR, and a Nerf ball. And I just want you to calculate these energies so you have an idea what type of numbers are typical for objects we are familiar with. How big of a number are we going to get for these different energies? All right, remember, make sure you're in meters per second and make sure you're in kilograms when you do these. Pause if you need to. The next type of energy is potential energy. And I know that's how you learned it in middle school. And they would have told you that potential energy is stored energy. I think a better way of thinking about it is just call it gravitational energy. 
If you'd like, you can tag them all together and call it gravitational potential energy or potential energy gravity. This energy is energy stored in an object because the object's position in a gravitational field. So let me explain. Here I am standing on my lab desk. Based on my position, I possess energy, gravitational energy, energy that could be unleashed upon anything that happens to be below me. This energy is determined by how high I am. That's why your position matters, okay, your height. The second factor is my mass. More massive objects are gonna have more energy and the source of this energy is the gravitational field. So changing any of these three things would change the amount of energy that I possess based on gravity. So once again, gravitational energy is based on my position in a gravitational field. The higher I am, the more energy I possess. So as I jump down, I unleash that stored energy and it turns into other forms, which we'll talk about later. All right, again, it depends upon my mass, the height, and the strength of the gravitational field. How does it get gravitational energy? Just like it got kinetic energy, it gets it by work, a force. Moving the object creates the energy. This time we're adding gravitational energy because we're lifting it at a constant speed. It's not getting faster, so we are not adding kinetic energy. We are only adding potential energy gravity. Again, that energy is based on how high we lifted it, how much mass it has, and the strength of the local gravitational field. All right? Here's how you calculate it. Mass, field, height. Potential energy, gravity, okay, is a way that you can denote it. Again, this is measured in joules, meters. This is in newtons per kilogram or meters per second per second. And this is in kilograms. You'll notice how the kilograms cancel, and we're left with uh, meters times Newton, which is exactly the same as we would have gotten when we did force times delta x. It's all got to be consistent. So this would be meters, this would be Newtons, and that's our gravitational energy. Remember, gravitational energy is not a vector, does not have a direction. I'd like you to calculate some typical gravitational energies. So let's take a one, um, 100 gram object and let's put it one meter above the ground. Let's take a wrestler and put him four meters above the ground. And finally, let's take a little toy drone and put it 25 meters above the ground. So use your formula three different times to calculate these three different gravitational energies so you get a feel for what numbers are typical for different objects, all right? You got the small mass, you got the wrestler, and then you got an object at a pretty high height. The final type of energy is elastic energy. Again, you might call it potential because it's stored energy, but the important part is it's stored elastically. I deform an object, and then when that object goes back to its original shape, it's going to unleash the energy that I put in there when I did the work to change its shape. Okay, so here I have a slingshot hooked up on one of my desks, and you'll see I'll put a little bean bag in there and pathetically fire it up onto the top of my bookcase. I don't know why I seem so much better when I was younger using these uh, toys, but we've got our elastic object, we're gonna deform it, and we're gonna fire something out of it. The two factors 
that determine um, how much energy is stored is how strong is that elastic object? How elastic is it? Is it easy to stretch or is it hard to stretch? The harder it is to stretch, the more energy will be in there once it is stretched. Then the other factor is how far back do I stretch it? And we'll call that delta X. Okay, and they are the only two factors that determine the energy stored in that slingshot. So if we have a person and we have a spring and we compress the spring, how much energy is stored in the spring is determined by how much I compress it and how strong is the spring. The formula looks like this. You take the stretch in meters, you square it, you multiply by the strength of the spring, which is measured in newtons per meter, you'll get your answer and your answer is going to come out in joules. So three different types of energy. Gravitational energy when you're above the ground. Elastic energy when you deform an object. And kinetic energy when you have an object that is in motion. So I hope this helps give you a little bit of a flavor for the types of energy and the formulas for calculating the amount of energy.